The Retro Tank 2X may have just launched in July of 2018, but there's a wealth of content out there about it already. Full-on reviews have been done and done well, but that's not the point of this video. We are gathered here today to pit the 2X against what I view as its closest peer. You've probably seen the word scalar thrown around to describe the 2X, but that phrasing can be a little misleading. The Retro Tank is actually a line doubler, hence the name 2X. Rather than stretching a 240p image to fill a larger space, the 2X simply draws each scan line twice, or something like that. That distinction is important because the process of line doubling is generally much faster than scaling, which means you get way less lag when using this thing than you do with, say, a Frame Meister. For examples of this speed difference, I'd check the description for videos by Scarlet Sprites and recommend. And just in case all this talk of speed has you worried, I can assure you that the Retro Tank manages its quick conversion to HDMI without making any sacrifices to picture quality. In fact, the 2X gives players several choices in terms of output. The first two modes are pretty straightforward. The Retro Tank allows gamers to either line double to 480p or simply pass a 240p picture straight through for an even faster conversion. To my eyes, the image quality was almost identical. It wasn't until I started cutting together compositions with two images side by side that I started to see a slight improvement in clarity with the bump to 480p. Probably the biggest advantage to doubling the output is that 480p over HDMI will be compatible with more equipment. That doesn't mean it'll work with everything though. I use my 2X in conjunction with an Atlona VGA scaler to get a picture that my Elgato capture card can stomach. As for the final video mode that the Retro Tank has on offer, you get a 480p image with a smoothing filter. I've found myself referring to this mode as 480s. The resulting image means the elimination of jaggies at a cost to overall sharpness. This mode has some fans out there, and I can almost see why some people would prefer it. Terrible people. In addition to these video modes, the Retro Tank 2X supports input from Composite, Component, and S-Video. That last one should excite N64 fans, who are now finding fewer and fewer scalers and TV sets that support the best video standard their unmodded systems can muster. S-Video on the N64 does look pretty stellar via the Retro Tank. And if the picture provided by 480p isn't quite sharp enough for you, you can squeeze every last ounce of sharpness out of your N64 using a Game Shark to disable anti-aliasing. This can be a revelation for some titles, while others really don't seem like they benefit from it at all. Now that we've gone over the various modes and inputs of the 2X, it's time to take a look at the competition. The iScan Pro is a line doubler from the year 2001. And it's been a staple of my gaming setup since my Super Nintendo decided it didn't want to work with my scaler. It's a fine piece of legacy equipment, and you can check out its handiwork on just about every Retro Tech Select video from Season 2. The iScan Pro is not without its drawbacks though, and it's through these flaws that we can see what a blessing the 2X can be to a retro setup. First and foremost, as serviceable as the iScan is, it's still a device from the early aughts. Technology has come a long way in that time, and you need look no further than size to see the difference. These are comparable devices, and the 2X leaves a much smaller footprint. My first thought when buying the 2X was, if nothing else, I'll save some shelf space. Beyond that, the technology included in the iScan is also aging kit. Despite being much smaller, the Retro Tank definitely produces a nicer image overall than the iScan does. It doesn't have nearly as much control over the image as the iScan affords, just look at all those knobs and dials. But both the 240 and 480p settings are genuinely sharper than the iScan. I'd almost argue that the 480s setting on the 2X is the closest to the picture produced by the iScan Pro. Remember that shot of Goldeneye earlier with the three 2X settings all together? Here's a look with the iScan Pro thrown in. The biggest issue I had with the iScan is the heavy presence of pixel shift. What I mean by that is that sometimes groups of pixels from one scan line will be shifted up or down from their respective rows. This glitch is most apparent when looking at lines of text. Now do you see it? And if you look at the same image from the 2X, voila, no more pixel shift. This difference is especially noticeable on text heavy games like RPGs. This improvement alone justifies the 2X as an upgrade to the iScan. The 2X also has far less ghosting than the iScan, but it does come with its own set of quirks. Because I still need a scaler to make the 2X cooperate with all of my equipment, I've employed an adapter to take the HDMI output of the 2X to the VGA input of the scaler, only to be reconverted back to HDMI before heading out to my receiver. It's all a bit redundant, but the adapter was cheap, and it allows the 2X to team up with things like a scan liner. 
Beyond extra equipment, there are a few sticking points with the actual output of the 2X as well. As illustrated earlier, the 2X gives a decent boost in overall clarity when compared to the iScan Pro. Perhaps as a result of this, areas of solid color often exhibit a bit more noise than the same areas on the iScan. If you look closely, you'll notice some extra movement on flat areas with the retro tank, an effect sometimes referred to as dot crawl. Whether the 2X is actually creating more video noise, or simply unmasking what was hidden by the softer output of the iScan, is hard to say. Either way, the amount of noise present is not enough to undercut the benefit of the enhanced sharpness the 2X provides. In addition to some extra noise, one video quirk that the 2X does exhibit is some horizontal shimmer. As evidenced here, the iScan Pro does a fine job of masking any motion shutter. With the 2X, the right conditions can set off a distracting ripple effect. This is my biggest beef with the 2X, and it probably stems from just how little the video is actually being processed. The iScan Pro has a softer, slower output with a lot more going on behind the scenes, while the 2X gives you a raw, crisp, low lag conversion. The last shortfall of the 2X also seems to be directly linked to its greatest strength. Just as the iScan Pro uses interpolation to mask the shimmer effect we were just looking at, it also has the benefit of housing a dedicated deinterlacing chip. For us, this means that 480i video, like the original PlayStation splash screen, looks noticeably better on the iScan Pro than it does on the 2X. As soon as we cut over to in-game cinematics or gameplay though, the 2X jumps right back out ahead of the iScan. And that brings us to the crux of this showdown. The strength of the 2X, what makes it so fast and clean, is that it's a very simple device. It takes 240p and doubles it to 480p without all the bells and whistles. Not only will it soon be more readily available than the iScan Pro, but it beats it on the fronts that matter most to gamers. By sacrificing some quality on 480i and putting up with a bit of extra shimmer, the 2X provides you with a sharper, lower latency image that shows less ghosting and eliminates pixel shift, and it does all of this in a package that's about a quarter of the size. If you don't have a line doubler already, I recommend picking up the 2X without hesitation. Even if you already have an older device like the iScan Pro, there are definitely some compelling reasons to think about upgrading. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next Retro Tech Select.